True Lies, Season 1, Episode 11, Unfamiliar Partnerships Thoughts. So, spoilers for these first 11 episodes, as well as the movie, and yeah, yet another episode that I loved. So, yeah, really badass action, I, yeah, throughout this entire episode, but yeah, starting from right away, like, as soon as Tucker, you know, gets caught puts on the mask. At first I thought the mask was maybe to hide a stunt double, but then later he's fighting without the mask. I don't know. But yeah, you know, really cool. I appreciate the long takes really showing off. No, they they learned the choreography. Nobody's cutting around to, to hide. Not that this show has been doing that, but like, you know, some Hollywood productions, they, they, they use really, really short shot lengths and yeah so we yeah the the opening the the cold open ends with him saying I need a guy he's called Harry Tasker so yeah and yeah Harry taught Jake some you know the yeah some fighting moves including the spin kick and I, you know, and and Harry's, you know, he just goes full bros like, I got a hundred bucks on my kid, and you know, Helen is so embarrassed. I'm not his wife. I'm I'm his caregiver. I'm I'm a nurse. <laughs> and yeah, she points out, you know, Jake is alone, and she says that Jake should apologize to. I think the other kid was named Andy. And, uh, yeah, there's definitely an Andy listed. And, uh, you know, Harry doesn't think so. So we're seeing, you know, clearly this episode is going to explore toxic masculinity. Really appreciate it. It is a huge problem. So, yeah, and this is a good way to, to explore it. And, you know, basically, Tucker exudes, like, he he's you know, his blood is toxic masculinity, you know, and I'm not saying that because he's black, I'm saying that because what he, actually, yeah, did they, well, Harry is also really toxic in this episode, so it's not like a, a black guy thing, anyway, yeah, you know, he lives and breathes toxic masculinity, but we do see that it is there in Harry already, and Tucker really brings it out in him, you know, it's not that only when he's around people like Tucker, that's when he gets, you know, because that's, that's not how it works, you know, if it's not in there at all, it's not going to, you know, there are men who are never going to get, you know, who are never going to exude toxic masculinity, no matter who you pair them up with. Now, let's see, yeah, and, and Tucker is brought into Omega, and when he sees Maria, he says, I didn't know we had, Omega had a modeling department. Wow. Just, holy crap. Like, just completely undermining, you know, she earned her way into to being there. She's not there because people think she's pretty. And, yeah, because Harry and Tucker are point men, they end up just... You know, they, they just show off how good they are at shooting and, and start, like, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, they they compete over who's better, and, you know. And Quinn, I, I continue to really appreciate I think that's something I'm going to miss when this show, so there's, like, two episodes left. I'm really going to miss Quinn, Luther, and Maria together, because there's just, it's, like... You really do get the sense that Quinn and and Luther are attracted to each other. You know, I mean, in real life, they're just actors. And the fact, and this thing of like Maria being the third wheel is is just great. And you know, she shows off some more stuff, including you know the the explosive gel. I think Helen was the one who later says, "What if?" one of us needs to, you know, what if one of us forgets that it's that and needs to use hand sanitizer? Um, I guess we could put it in normal, but then it's just explosive goo. I know you are annoyed with Luther right now, Maria, so I'm gonna let that one slide. But explosive goo is amazing. That's not something to make light of. 
I'm joking. And the the yeah, you know, um, why don't you two chat? And Quinn walks off. Chat about what? Oh, you know, just, you know, we usually chat, so she's like, let's chat. Anyway, I have to go, you know, and, and later she says, are you sure you wouldn't rather do anything else in the world? Let's see, and, and, and Helen's like, I'm sure it's not that bad, and then smash cut, it is that, it's worse, it's worse than Gib thought. You know, they're standing there firing assault rifles, instead of planning just you know people this is a life or death situation and they're like they got the ruler out they've got their pants around their ankles just measuring yeah and you know not to imply that there's anything wrong with you know gayness or anything like that just Measuring is not the, it's not the right time to be measuring, that's all. And yeah, we see Luther continue to avoid Maria, the, the you know, Helen, can you do up her straps? And just, yeah. And I'm sure it'll blow over. Oh, by the way, Tucker is staying in the guest room. And that's... It's very, it's very gender stereotypical, but yeah, that is, like, there's, there's a lot of truth to a number of these gender stereotypes, and yeah, a lot of guys don't really realize you gotta, you really gotta run that by the, the your, your female partner. Don't just invite someone and just, you know, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Quinn thought there should be less tapping and cool cool and yeah so you know Luther claims that Quinn is jealous when really he's the one who's feeling awkward about it and they're using sports metaphors And yeah, when when Tucker does not agree to abort the mission, of course Gibb has to request that Marie and Luther cover. And we get another great music cue. I'm not sure I've been calling those out, but like fantastic music cues during action and such. And yeah, also a really, really cool action scene. And they discuss afterwards. I'm just saying, you're a little waterboardy. And... I care to spit your mother. He said that to me too. And yeah, Tucker manipulates and things to where you know, Gib and the broker are fighting, Tucker doesn't help, and even, you know, locks the door. And ultimately it does work, but, you know, we learn Tucker told broker that Gib is an assassin. It could have gone very wrong. And, yeah, we learned that Tucker rescued Harry in the past, and apparently Gib doesn't know, but later we do find out he did know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so that means that he, even knowing that, he was still really frustrated with, with Tucker. I looked up the, the, so the actor's Robert Christopher Riley. Apparently I haven't seen him in anything else. He's just, I don't know, he's just got, he's got an energy about him. I really want to see him in more. He played, in, in The Born Legacy, he played outcome number six, I guess, maybe, I've, you know, without, like, really feeling like I remember it, maybe I somewhat remember that, but, yeah, I, I, he did an incredible job here. Anyway, uh, let's see, that brings us to... 
yeah, so now Tucker is teaching Jake some things that... <sighs> some new moves, and, like, it's remarkable that Jake still doesn't piece together, maybe my father doesn't sell computers. The pillows, my pillows have suffered enough for one night. I'll get my pillows. That's not what I meant. Yeah, you gotta be careful how you word things like that around kids. Uh, okay, um, how many guards is that, more or less? More, not less. Can you draw their fire? Can you just call it getting shot at? Keep them busy. And Tucker provokes Gibbs. And Harry is delaying telling Gibbs Tucker rescued him. And let's see. Yeah, and, and Maria calls Luther Agent Tenet. What? Oh, I, I felt like maybe I should be referring to you by your last name. Unless you want to discuss it. I really, I don't think I've truly appreciated until now. She's got a great smile for just like, hmm, if I was, if I wasn't watching my language, let's go with, let's go with crap eating grin. You know, just a, just a great when she, when she knows she's right. And then, yeah, there's a, there's a, it's a, it's a smug smile. And it's just, it's, it's fantastic. It's exactly spot on. And Tucker and Harry get all the way in, and Tucker lets slip Iran, not North Korea, and aims a gun at Harry. And Harry realizes Tucker is doing a deal. He's selling to the bad guys. Which, you know, I mean, if he was an American spy selling to the bad guys, why did he go private at all? Just... You know, keep working for Uncle Sam. He'll have you shipping all kinds of horrible weapons to terrible people. And let's see. Yeah, and and then I don't. I I wish the the episode. I, I guess you know, TV show pacing kind of thing. But I kind of wish that the show had let really linger and really sit that. Tucker considered cutting Harry in, but then he saw the team and realized that Harry had changed. You know, like, hypothetically, if he had only been working with Harry, if Harry hadn't, you know, if the, if the team hadn't been involved at all, Harry would have learnt by Tucker legitimately telling him, we can make a lot of money selling you know, what was it, uranium to, you know, terror, it's just, yeah, so, so that's, yeah, I'm not, not really a fan of how they throw Iran under the bus, but, you know, they're kind of towing the line for American military anyway, so it's not really a surprise. Of course, there are some, some bad people in Iran, some of them have power, but, like, if you look at what American foreign policy has done to Iran, you can understand their frustration with America. But but yeah, you know, he legit Tucker actually thought that Harry would have been completely okay with that arrangement. You know, that's horrifying. Just you know, to imagine someone who seemingly knows you really well thinking that about me. And then he says, "You owe me." I saved you, now you save me. And, you know, toxic masculinity is extremely selfish. You know, there's only room for one. The, the toxic masculinity basically says that every, every man is in constant competition with every other man for access to the most conventionally attractive women. You know, so, yeah, he's not going to watch Harry's back. And the fact that he saved him before, gets thrown back in Harry's face. And Harry uses the the gel to blow open the door. I like 
Helen Unchained. I like that she just goes completely, you know, he's not exactly on my good list right now. And and the reasons that she lives, you know, he he's teaching my kid bad manners. He's, he, let's see, he ruined, he's, he ruined my guest towels. And, you know, the, these various things are just, yeah. And, and she's like not even hesitating to shoot at, you know, I actually, I thought there was going to be a line because Luther's right next to and, and like notices that she's shooting. I don't know, I guess maybe there was and they ended up cutting it out, but it really seemed like, okay, there's going to be like a line, an exchange about that, but just, yeah. And six minutes, so we have a ticking clock. Tucker versus Harry, very, very cool. Actually, I was a little surprised there really wasn't after as, right after they said you know they're within six minutes we have to you know, like I don't think there was more than one minute maybe two I kind of felt like I mean they could have said four minutes and then we we got to get out of here yeah and then we have to be gone or something but anyway the well yeah I guess I mean they did also have to get Tucker into the car and get away from there after maybe that's it anyway let's see the um, yeah really really cool when Harry's like beating Tucker just you know hitting him in the face and just you know I guess the kid won that time and I guess the kid was fast enough and it was that thing about Gib was the one who made you soft I thought it was your wife but yeah so are you gonna talk to Gib or do I need to smother in your sleep which I do know how to do now and yeah, Luther and Maria finally talk, and, and you know Maria is like, "Are you sure you wouldn't? Oh, we're we're gonna chat. You're sure you wouldn't rather do anything else in the world right now?" And yeah, it wasn't Quinn who was uh, uncomfortable with the fact that they used to date, and now he's dating someone else at you know the job. Quinn actually wanted all three of them to hang out sometime. <laughs> And that is, you know, again, it's super gender stereotypical. Not not all men are bad communicators, not all women have this high a level of emotional intelligence, but there is some truth to it. And yeah, like, if you trust your partner, it can actually be healthy. I mean, we are talking about, you know, they still have to work together. You know, basically, like, either Quinn and Luther remain completely separate from Maria, which is just going to be awkward because they still, all three of them have to work together. They're on the same side. You know, Quinn is making equipment for the entire team, not only Luther. And, you know, that. so yeah, that's one option. And the other is that they have a relation, you know, they all hang out together, which, you know, if, if obviously if Maria is uncomfortable with it, you could understand that. Although, I, actually, I suppose it's possible that she could bring yeah, they could, they could, like, double date. I don't think that's necessarily... Although, I guess Maria... Maybe Maria could bring Kevlar, the, the canine unit, who drinks too much coffee. But the... the yeah, you know, it's... It would be a different thing if it was, like... If, if Luther was constantly you know, flirting with Maria, or if she was a really toxic ex, or they weren't, you know, but they have to be in the same place, the same time, every single working day, you know, it's better if they have a good relationship with each other. It's, you know, instead of every single time Quinn enters a room that Luther's in, Maria just has to run away or, like, turn away and awkwardly pretend like they're not, you know, it's just easier that way. You know, it'll take work, sure, but it, in the long term, it's better. And Maria and Helen talk about the the men and whether or not they're talking with others about their feelings. And we even get another reference to post-yoga coffee talking about feelings kind of thing. And... Yeah, you know, I, I really, really appreciate Harry talks to Gib, 
and you know he's like Tucker said you make me soft and that's not true you make me better that's what you make me and sometimes I sometimes I wish I would I, I didn't put this this limitation on myself but it's possible you know it's it's a PG show maybe younger viewers are watching and I wouldn't want them to to think sometimes it's hard but yeah the the yeah and at the end you know Harry did talk to Jake and Jake showed Andy the the spin kick and now they're friends again and, and Helen's like that's sweet I guess which you know and I mean there is some some truth to you know if they were friends before it's not necessarily it's not gonna work with everyone it's definitely not gonna work with like a bully and their bully tar the bully's target kind of thing but if they were friends before and like the one thing is that you know now Jake is using these moves yeah, there's a lot of cases where, as long as Jake teaches Andy that move and doesn't get upset at, and and Jake doesn't get upset at Andy if Andy uses it, you know, then they're good because the thing was that there was this, you know, there was a move that that didn't, you know, I mean, essentially. You know, he, he did say that was an, uh, you know, he calls the, the, or rather, the coach realizes that they get into a little bit of a fight, and, you know, he says that was an unlicensed kick, and, yeah, you know, basically it is this thing of, like, Andy feels like I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best here, and then you bring in something that isn't, we're not supposed to be doing, and yeah, if, if Jake then turns around and says, okay, I'll teach you. A lot of lot of guys are gonna be okay with with that, and yeah, I appreciate you know showing. It's not that all masculinity is toxic; it's only toxic masculinity that is you know, and you know being com competitive does not automatically make you toxic. So, yeah, um, it's gonna be really weird to, but yeah, there's like there's. To, to no longer be watching this show after having been watching it for yeah a couple of months now I guess let's see 11 episodes one per week yeah yeah almost three months I guess and yeah just two more episodes and the show was too negatively received to justify making a second season but yeah been really really liking it so far I am impressed that they held off because like this was the toxic masculinity episode episode 11 like they've they've really managed to to yeah to pace themselves to to only get you know you'd think that would be like the very first thing that they would but yeah that's it for this one looking forward to the last two episodes and Let's see. So yeah, I'll also I'll do the clearing scream queens and the clearing today scream queens might only be tomorrow and a movie before the week is out. So until next time, bye.